Atheists claim that the Bible is a book of fairy tales. And there is no such thing as a prophecy, right? I mean, people were writing down things that already happened and then claimed that these writings were like super old. But what do you do if an atheist, someone who never believed in God, who was part of a group of people that hated the Bible, actually fulfilled Bible prophecy? Welcome to Gems of Truth, my name is Vincent Bourgeois, and what sounds like a joke at first actually happened in 1798. This atheist is a famous figure in world history, his name is Louis Alexandre Berthier. He was Napoleon's general, a military leader, and a key figure in Europe after the French Revolution. Here's what happened, you know that during the 16th century, a big reformation was happening in Europe, right? You had people like Calvin, Luther, Wesley, who brought the Bible to the common people. The Roman Catholic Church was the ruling church back then in Europe, and the religious leaders realized that they would lose money, control, and power. So the leaders in Rome started a counter-reformation. In many countries, they tried to push back. They didn't have that much success in Germany, for example, but in France, they were more successful. They were oppressing the common people. They left them uneducated, degraded, and brutalized. But they couldn't do that forever. For about 200 years, they were trying to push the people down, but then the French people had enough of this oppressive religion. At the same time, you had a king in France who was kind of lazy and who didn't really care. He was often quoted having said things like, oh, you know, try to make things go as long as I am likely to live, and after my death, you know, it may be as it will. I mean, what kind of king is that? <laughs> And then it happened. On July 14th in 1789, the French people were storming the Bastille in Paris. People were tired of being oppressed, tired of seeing this fake religion. So they went totally crazy. And instead of separating between truth and error, they just rejected everything. They said, we want our own state now. Forget God, forget religion. We want freedom now. Historians estimate that between 30,000 and 40,000 people lost their lives over the coming months. It was a disaster. People were being executed in public, hundreds and hundreds of them at the same time. The church in Rome had misrepresented God's character and perverted his requirements, and now France rejected both the Bible and its author. By the way, here are some quick facts about the French Revolution. I'm not sure if you know this already, but in 1793, the French government officially put in their declaration that no God exists. Let me share a quote right now with you. France stands apart in the world's history as the single state which, by the decree of her legislative assembly, pronounced that there was no God and the vast majority danced and sang with joy in accepting the announcement. Isn't that crazy? Like people dancing and shouting because the government now says there's no God, right? You're free and everyone is like, woohoo! And you know what the fruit was of that? A country abandoning God? You might already know it. People killing each other. Over 70,000 faithful Christians were brutally murdered. That was the fruit. Okay, and now here's where the atheist and Bible prophecy come into place. Are you ready for this? You had this constant battle going on for years now. Secular France after the revolution and then the Roman Catholic Church. At the end of 1797, there was a battle in Rome between papal troops and revolutionists from France. And on December 28, Dufay, a French military leader, tried to go in there and defuse the situation, but he got murdered on the spot. And that's when the three directors of the French Revolution were so angry. They were like, we are sending another military leader and we will avenge Dufal's death. So Berthier, the guy I was mentioning at the beginning, he went into the Papal States with 15,000 soldiers. He positioned himself outside the walls of Rome. Three days later he entered the city and on February 20th, 1798, Berthier took the Pope captive. Something like this had never happened before. Europe was in shock. The Pope, the most important religious figure, now captive and in exile. That guy died one and a half years later and the Catholic Church completely lost its influence, its prestige and its power. Up until today they were not able to regain control. It was like a deadly wound. You know this church had oppressed the common people for so many years. 
but it ended in 1798. Now, why is this significant, right? Why, why am I making a video about this, right? L lots of history, maybe interesting, but maybe not. Like, like who cares about Berthier and the Pope and all of that? Well, let me share with you why, okay? Stick with me here for another minute. The Bible describes in Revelation 12, a pure woman, symbolizing a pure church, God's faithful people. We read about in that chapter how the dragon, the devil, tries to kill the male child of that woman, right? That's Jesus Christ. Satan tried to kill Jesus at his birth. And then we read that God's people, the faithful church, had to flee into the wilderness where they had a place prepared by God. And they should stay there 1,260 days. So basically, the Bible predicted that faithful Christians would be persecuted for a specific amount of time. But not only that, we also read who will actually persecute those faithful Christians. And you know who that is? Daniel in the Old Testament had a vision about it. Paul was writing about it. And John the Revelator saw it multiple times in vision. Let me tell you who that is. This persecuting power would rise up between Jesus' first appearing, right? Jesus' first coming and Jesus' second coming. It would put itself in the temple of God. This power would change times and laws. And John said it's a power that gets its authority from the devil. It's also speaking blasphemy and it's persecuting God's faithful people. It has the power for 42 prophetic months or 1,260 prophetic prophetic days. By now, I don't think I need to tell you who that power is. You might already know it, right? But we're talking about a religious system right now who came up after Jesus, who persecuted people in the name of God. It's a system that claims to have authority to forgive sins and also be God's representative on earth. It's a system that changed biblical laws. Friends, the only church that fits that description is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, we should never, never please criticize or judge faithful Catholics who are in that church, who are seeking God, who are believers and brothers and sisters. But we do have to recognize that this system, right, this papal religion, this fake religion is what the Bible condemns. Now, in Bible prophecy, a prophetic day equals a literal year. You can read more about that when you're studying passages like Numbers 14, 34 or Ezekiel 4, 6. But now I just want you to remember, okay, one prophetic day equals one literal year in history. Also remember that the ancient calendar regularly had 360 60 days per year. Now let's calculate this prophecy because the Bible says that it would happen and it would happen for a specific time. We already analyzed who that power is. Now we need to see how long it actually reigned. You might have already heard that the Roman Catholic Church rose up on the scene after there was this leadership vacuum in Rome. Constantine legalized Christianity back then and then he was moving his capital from Rome to Turkey. So there was no leader in Italy. And then the Pope was like, oh, you know, I'll fill that spot, why not? And in 5038, Justinian, a pagan Roman emperor, officially granted the Roman bishop the role of the defender of the faith. Take that year I just mentioned, add the Bible prophecy, 1,260 years, and guess to what year he'll come. 1798. Friends, the Bible predicted that an oppressive, fake church would rule over the world and persecute faithful believers, but only until 1798, only for those 1,260 years. And when the time came, God used an atheist, a revolutionist, General Berthier, to fulfill the prophecy. Isn't that crazy that God used that person to fulfill Bible prophecy? To prove that the Bible is accurate. Oh, and to give you the cherry on top, you know what? General Berthier actually died in Bamberg, Germany in a really weird way. Even today, no one knows why and how he actually died. He fell out a window on June 1st in 1815. I actually visited that spot together with my wife not too long ago. But the timing of his death is what shocks me. Napoleon was counting on Berthier at that time. Many historians today actually see Berthier as one of Napoleon's best generals, best marshals. Okay, so Berthier died suddenly in Bamberg and 17 days later there's the great battle of Waterloo. Napoleon later said and I'm quoting here if Berthier had been there I would not have met this misfortune. In other words Napoleon was like oh, I could have won this with Berthier. What if Berthier had been there at Waterloo? Would Napoleon have defeated the other armies? Would he have conquered Europe? We don't know but it could have been 
the case. It's almost like just before Napoleon tried to successfully conquer Europe, God stepped in one more time. And although many reasons led to Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, God for some reason allowed Berthier to die just 17 days earlier. I don't want to stretch this too far, guys, right? But you see how God used this this atheist, this French general, to fulfill Bible prophecy. But then at the same time, just a few years later, God was like, enough is enough. And when another dictator tried to rule over Europe, God said no. And so Napoleon and Berthier were not able to unite Europe, just like what another Bible prophecy in Daniel 2 predicted. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. There are three powerful takeaways that I want to share with you. Number one, the answer to fake Christianity is not atheism it's real Christianity. We have seen this with France. What the Catholic Church did back then was horrible. And I'm sure the people were all tired of religion back then, but the answer was not atheism. The secular state formed by the revolutionists didn't last long. They had a reign of terror afterwards. They had dead bodies all over the place. The answer to fake Christianity, friends, was and still is true Christianity. Real Christ-like love, real humility, real meekness, real patience, loving your enemies. That's the solution. Takeaway number two, a government without Christian principles collapses. The only country who officially tried to get away from every Christian principle was France. They even tried to put away the seven-day week, which we find in the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2, and tried to replace it with a 10-day week. They burned the Bibles and killed believers. But at the end of the day, this intolerant behavior made the country collapse. How beautiful it is to see that on the other side, over the Atlantic Ocean, there was another country that was formed on Christian principles. Our country, the United States of America, prospered like no other country in the world. It became the number one leading nation, not by making wars with others, not by trying to oppress others, no, but by forming the Constitution on Christian principles, by relying on God. And friends, let me tell you, I believe that's one of the main reasons why the United States is such a big, and mighty country today. We don't dictate the conscience. We have freedom and religious freedom in America because of the Christian principles that we find in our constitution. All right, and takeaway number three, God can use anyone and anything to make his word come true. If God can use Berthier, a French general, an atheist, someone who hated the Bible, to make Bible prophecy come true, if he can use a donkey to speak to Balaam, he can use anyone and anything to make his word come true. Are you doubting that God's word is coming true in your life? Do you think, oh, the Bible promises are nice, but they're not for me? I don't know if they really apply to me. Well, God speaks to you today and says, my promises are true and they are true for you. You know, the French philosopher Voltaire once said, I'm weary of hearing people repeat that 12 men established a Christian religion. I will prove that one man may suffice to overthrow it. Kind of a radical statement, right? But you know what? Voltaire died in 1778. Generations have passed since his death. Millions have tried to discredit the Bible. But the Christian religion is far from being overthrown. Where you had hundreds of Bibles in Voltaire's time, now you have tens and hundreds of thousands of Bibles today. Just like this early reformer once said, the Bible is an anvil that has worn out many hammers. And I'm quoting scripture right now. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. God can use anyone and anything to fulfill his purpose and his plan in your life. No need to doubt, no need to be perplexed, and no need to worry. If he made the persecution stop in 1798 using an atheist, he can help you in your life today. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. All right, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. If you want to watch more encouraging videos about the Bible, the prophecies, the promises, check them out right here. I got some for you. And don't forget to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it.